Welcome back to the Trick Shift Garage, Trick Shift Garage YouTube channel that is. Today, we're gonna to be working on the valve cover, the valve cover gasket, and the spark plug uh, seals. Um, now what happens is the valve cover that I ordered, it came with the spark plug rings. I couldn't get the rings separately, so I basically just figured, let me just get a whole new valve cover, came with a gasket, and so I'm gonna replace that. This is a new PCV tube. Basically, they say this thing dries out um, after a while. And since this car is like, you know, near 200,000 miles, I'm like, I might as well just go ahead and I'm probably gonna have to replace that too. Oh, looky, looky. So shiny. Here's the new, the gasket's already on there pretty much. It's already pretty much seated. Okay, so yeah. I couldn't get this valve cover gasket by itself. Everywhere I looked, it seemed to have like, um, it came with the valve cover too. And this is like actually a hard plastic. It's not even metal. The original is also plastic, so. In case you haven't seen, you can check out my uh, oil in the spark plug hole video. Um, what? This thing is caked in oil. Video. Um, what happened is these little seals that go around each spark plug hole they went bad. They, they, they probably just dried up and got all crispy and whatnot, and they allowed oil in. So by replacing this whole kit, it should fix that problem. We're gonna do that. We're also gonna replace the ignition coils, all four. So let's get started. All right, so me and Bob have been looking through our YouTube analytics, and we've noticed you guys have been watching, but not subscribing. So can you please do us a huge favor, huge, huge favor, and just hit that subscribe button it helps the channel out. It helps us try to, you know, bring more content for you guys. So hit that subscribe. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> so hit that subscribe button. Thank you. All right. So first you want to go ahead and uh, screw your negative terminal. Loosen these torques up. Next step, we're gonna go ahead and remove the coils. You wanna also make sure you disconnect all these before you try to pull it out. Ooh. He's back, all the oil again. This first one was the worst. Yeah. I think if I remember correctly, these had a little bit, not too bad. This one had a little bit of oil on it, but we're going to replace these anyway, so. Oh. This one's the bad one. Oh, yeah. Yep, oil. Well, that one's clean, actually. Uh, that one's got a little. That one's got a little. This one was the bad one. All right, so the next step is we're going to go ahead and take off these two grounding um, straps. Break on these. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and take off the bolts for each one. And I'm just going to screw the bolt back onto the um, engine mount so I don't have to worry about it. That's a trick shift garage trick. Make it finger tight. That's good. The next step is to remove these, um, I guess, harnesses, holders, whatever. So you squeeze it in there and it pop right out, like so. Same one here, like so. Yeah, that's broke. Oh well. Next step is removing these vacuum tubes. This is for the PCV. This thing it gets super brittle and I can already like if you touch it, it it's like, like it's it. hard this thing's definitely gonna break <sighs> look at that yeah and here's the replacement which you know is a regular hose up. vacuum hose <laughs> I'm gonna drop it ready that is not rubber anymore so now we're gonna take this one off here 
the simple pliers that come up right there. We'll just move it out of the way like that. All right, so the next step is we want to support the engine, and we're going to do that with uh, the jack, hydraulic jack. I'm going to slide under there, and I'm going to show you where exactly I'm going to put it. It's going to be on the oil pan. If you want to use a piece of wood, that way it, it doesn't uh, damage the oil pan when you try to go up against it. So you're going to get it lined up. I'm going to put my 2x4, and then you're going to try to have it center, like where the hydraulic jack is, where the oil pan is. And we're going to come up. Actually, I'm going to slide this over. I'm going to hit the uh, subframe. <sighs> Center. And this will keep your engine support it. So you just want to have it snug. So the next step is you want to go ahead and loosen up, not remove completely, but loosen up these bolts, these two here, this one here, and this one back here. They should all be 14. There you go. Pull that out. Now I forgot there was a there's another clip right here um, that's for the wiring harness. But all right, so the next step is you want to loosen this bolt up, but again, not remove. That should be good. So as you can see, I'm gonna need new engine mounts soon. There's a big old crack right there on that one. This is for the dog bone. So you wanna loosen this, this bolt here, and then what we have to do is remove this bolt, but before we remove that bolt, we need to get this power steering fluid reservoir out of here. Oh, there we go. So that's what you gotta do is um, this little tab here, you want to push it back. So that should give us access to get this bolt out. Get a little WD-40 for good luck. I should, get, I should break it loose enough. All right, there it is. All right, so this one you can remove. Here's the crack again. I need to replace this going forward. So that's just something else I gotta, I gotta do. All right. Go ahead and that. Fixing that. Fixing that. Don't forget this bolt. So now we're going to go ahead and loosen these four and that should free the uh, the engine mount. So right here, uh, my camera ended up dying on me so I missed the part of me loosening up the four bolts. But that's all you missed here and then I kept on going. Alright, so we're going to loosen up the big one. Alright, so now we're just going to Loosen all these bolts. At this point, you should be able to lift everything out. Here's the engine mount. And then this guy, a little wiggling, it's free. So here you can see, this is where the engine mount usually sits. And this is actually pretty cool. First time I've ever taken the engine mount off there. And you can see the oil, how, how it comes out. I guess it looks pretty shot. Let's see if I can come around here and show you the back side. Here's the back side. Oil leaks out everywhere, it looks like.
next step is take the valve cover off. And that one's still stuck in there, so we're gonna have to pry it. Ooh, got a knock on my camera over. covers off let's take a look at everything looks good pretty clean overall overall so gotta clean up the edges be, be careful make sure you don't get that dirt and grime into the engine that won't be good for it everything else looks pretty good looks pretty clean awesome here's the old one I think it's tired so, there's some RTV that's going to have to be applied. I want to show you the spark plug holes. It's like a hard plastic. Now, it's just so old and degraded at this point that you can't even, it's, it's not even sealing it really. That's the reason why I was getting oil in my spark plug holes. All right, so you'll see some uh, some old sealant, some RTV sealant. Anyway, you want to make sure and scrub that off. And I'm using a brass brush, and you're gonna lightly, gently scrub away at it and try to get it away from the engine. It comes off of my finger. Oh, there you go. I'm right there. Yeah, you want this stuff off because it will just get in the way of the new sealant when you put it on. Yeah, you gotta figure it out. Go ahead and use that. But don't use um, any steel. The steel will damage aluminum. Brass is fine. That looks good. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Make sure you get this gunk off. So on these particular uh, cars, there needs to be RTV sealant that's applied on these corners. What I'm going to use is uh, this Permatex Ultra Black. This is what we're going to dab into each of these corners. High flexibility and oil resistant, um, idea for domestic and older vehicles, and it's sensor safe. So, um, and it's Permatex, which is a pretty good brand. Um, Never had any complaints. Anyway, you can get this at like, shoot, I think I got this at Walmart. You can probably get it at AutoZone, Advance Auto, all the places. So uh, you just want to make sure it's automotive grade. So I'll take this off. And the side's got your thing. Push. There's your hole. Now this one comes with a nozzle. So if yours has a nozzle, it's a good idea to put it on. It'll make it uh, applying it a little bit easier. There's different sizes you can cut to, but you know, keep in mind once you cut, once you cut so much off, uh, you're not getting it back. So I'm thinking I'm gonna cut like right here, at this, uh, at that line right there. Put a nice, healthy amount right there. Here we have the new one. Now, before you put it on, you just want to make sure that there's no damage, that there's really no cracks. 
um, that everything looks as it should. You want to make sure that this gasket seal is, is pushed in all the way. And it looks like it's pushed in nice. Let's seat it properly. Feels good. Everything is intact and placed as it should. All right, so at this point, we're going to go ahead and install it. And again, go slow. Take your time. You kind of have to fish it through this wire here. Um, but go slow and deliver it. To get it lined up, push it in. Good. Alright. Cicada. Just invading my workspace. So first one we can go here and we're gonna tighten it down to 74 inch pounds. All right, now we're gonna put this big old monster back carefully. Nice and gentle. Yeah, so let's start these by hand. Put the nut on. I think this goes all the way down. Once I get a couple, once I get these three snug, I think I'll drop it. I can't, I can't get that one in. I think I'll back this one out. Wait. All right, we'll go ahead and just gonna zip these down. But make sure you have them hand started before you try to do this. You don't want to strip these out. That's not good. Once you get these snug, you don't have to get them tightened all the way. But once you get everything snug, this should hold the engine up. So now you can lower the hydraulic jack so at this point the five bolts that need to be put back on and tightened to the actual engine itself i could not find the torque spec for these five bolts so i would just say tighten it as much as you could i think i ended up doing like 50 foot pounds on my torque wrench um, but I scoured the internet and I could not find the torque specs for these five bolts. So if you happen to run into them, leave a comment below, let me know. I'd greatly appreciate it. And then I can update the video. All right, so the next step is we're going to put this bolt back in. Get that snug. And we're just going to tighten this as tight as we can. We're going to go ahead and we're going to put this uh, power steering fluid reservoir back in. It basically clicks into place. So you just want to line up the, uh, like the little slots in the back and then push it down. Going in, we're gonna we're gonna suck this oil out. See what we got. How much is that? Just under like ten. There we go. Uh, I should probably grab the 
rag or something. So, and again, here's the oil. Again, this is from the valve cover, the old one. Just cleaning up the mess of the old one now. Time to put the spark plugs back. And do this by hand. There goes number two. The important thing here is to make sure that the spark plug screws in naturally. There should be no binding or anything keeping you from doing this by hand. If there is, you need to take it out and clean and uh, make sure there's no debris and try again. All right, number three. Number four. Right in. We're gonna go ahead and torque these down to 14 and a half pound feet. But it's important to make sure that you got the right tight, the right tightness. Very good. So we got our new uh, munition coil. Um, ready to install it looks good no damage anything um, if you'd like you don't have to but it's, if you would like to you can put a little dab of dielectric grease in here just to help with the uh, electrical connection but we're gonna go ahead and install and just kind of push it in there like so and number two All right, last one. And make sure you have these uh, electrical connections kind of like pushed back out of the way because you don't want to like sandwich it in there and get it stuck underneath the coil. All right, so once we got all of them kind of in, we're gonna plug them in first before we tighten them. That just gives us a little bit more wiggle room. Because once you have them tightened down, they're really hard to maneuver past. Okay. Okay, so these um, these bolts for the ignition coils, they get tightened down to 62 inch pounds. You know me, I love my uh, I love my torque spec, so I'm going to torque this thing down to spec 62 inch pounds out of my new torque wrench. So next step. Now that we've got all the ignition coils in, everything's plugged in, these are all torqued down, we have to start putting things back to where they were. This can go back here, and this is in, it's kind of dry, but I think we'll be okay to put it back. The one that was here, a little vacuum tube for the, uh, this is the PCV valve right here. This is what happened to it. It literally just, it was just so brittle, it disintegrated. So I got a new one um, I ordered ahead of time. So we're gonna put this new one on. This is an actual genuine Nissan. The only thing I need to do is take off the, um, the connecting piece. So don't throw this part away, okay? Keep that part. We're gonna take them off the old hose and we're gonna use them on the new hose. Here's the other half. Just use the simple pliers, comes right out. So here's the uh, the new hose, and we're going to go ahead and put that on. So you want to be careful. So go ahead, and before you do anything, you want to squeeze the the clamp, and then put it on, and then just release, just to, just to put it in place. That's all you're doing at this point. I don't know if it's in the right orientation yet, but I'm just getting it on the hose. I can always turn it once I actually get it in place. So you just want to get it fit it like that. I would come up a little bit just so there's no tension. I should probably push this one up some too. Alright. Alright, so at this point we're gonna you put this side in and this side in here. And I think I think I'm gonna go like this side is a little bit longer. And then you see how this plastic piece is longer than this, the plastic piece for the PCV. I think I'm going to do it that way. So the longer side, it's a little bit longer. See this side here and this side here, it's a little bit longer. So I'm just going to put it on the uh, intake manifold side. So you just want to push it in all the way. Same thing for the uh, PCV side. Push that in. All right. So once you got that, simple as, I didn't do too bad on this side. 
squeezing it and then you're just gonna rock it back and forth until same as this side squeeze it and I'll turn this one around a little bit I did too bad there we go yeah so here you can see I left about uh, maybe a quarter inch this side down here maybe about Ooh, say an eighth maybe but yeah you just you don't want to have it all the way to the end but like leave a little bit of space for it okay now we're gonna do uh, this part this is another vacuum line I think it's uh, it's just a breather line so we're gonna push that on we're just gonna push it down on older hoses you can see where the clamp used to be right down here there's like an, an impression on the hose so what I'm thinking or what I like to do is just squeeze the hose or the clamp I mean and then put it over and just have it fit almost in the same exact spot where it was before all right we're gonna go ahead and I don't think I touched this one somehow the clamp moved back so we're just gonna push it back in there make sure that one's connected well all right so at this point we can go ahead and snap in the uh, wire harness connector into the valve cover assembly. Just line it up and push it in. And there's one over here. I broke the one that's supposed to go here. Um, there's a hole there. Um, there's supposed to be a connector piece, but like I said, I snapped mine off on the old one. It was just old and brittle. I don't think it's really necessary, but I mean, if you have it, you can go ahead and snap yours in there too. Uh, one of the last steps you got to do is you got to reconnect these two grounding straps and I already have the bolts I left them in place uh, When I was replacing the valve cover, so we just go ahead and loosen them put them back in Again be careful do not drop your bolts Kind of gives me the spooks when I think about dropping a bolt like right now at this point in the project I know when you get close to the end of the project. It's it's so tempting to to rush and um, that's the last thing you want to do because that's when the biggest accidents happens is usually when you're rushing so you want to just take your time like I kind of that's kind of why I said uh, I called it a day on my first day is I'll come back because I just didn't want to rush anything and, and end up messing something up and causing a bigger problem so when you're working on cars when you start feeling like you just out of gas and if you can try to just call it a day and come back all right, so when I was working on the car, I moved this intake track out. So you want to make sure my screws, these screws just don't come out anymore. They're just rusted or something. But you want to loosen these if you can and then put them in there. They kind of snap in and out and then make sure that this is, that's in there. The last step is going to be putting on your negative terminal. I remember the old cars, they used to have like little tiny eight millimeter six millimeter like little nuts for the terminals all right so all we're gonna do at this point is turn the engine on and inspect we're gonna check the valve cover make sure there's no serious like oil spurting out anywhere anything crazy like that so let me go ahead all this smoke that you see over here oh man that's from the exhaust it's all the oil that's been burning Engine off. Still no leaks. Not that I know of. Alright kids. Last but not least, the seal of approval. Job well done. All right, so the valve cover is back on, or I should say the new valve cover is back on. Um, everything looks good. We cycled the engine. We basically heated up all the way. We checked for oil leaks. We couldn't find any. So we think, we think for now, we are good. Uh, probably do a, vo a follow-up video in the future just to show you guys around it and make sure that there's, you know, that the oil is still not uh invaded the spark plug hole or has leaked out the side of my engine anymore um but that's it thanks for watching we'll see you on the next one in the track we're
I ran a... 18.9? No, man. I ran a... I ran a 12.26 right here. Okay. See? 12.26. 15 is a... That was that was the time, military time. I went there. So oh, 15 was you're only doing 15 miles an hour when you went through. <laughs> and that 1226 was 12 hours and 56 minutes or 26 minutes. That's freaking rude. <laughs> Bob, do yeah. you have anything to say? Yeah. Um. <laughs> a lot of people are not subscribed, and you're watching this video. You it's haven't subscribed yet? What are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. That's all you gotta say. Yeah. Pretty much. That's it. Uh, Nothing. Okay. Um. Change up the next one. You'll change up on the next one. <laughs> he, he, this is what he thinks about all the times. Is, is he's, uh, you know, trying to get more subscribers. So if you like our work, please do hit that subscribe button.